Don't ask me how, but I've got these three little ancient monsters and decided to make a side-by-side -side comparison. Also, don't ask me why. Porter 400 was an obvious choice, and since I live in the Netherlands and cameras are not weather sealed and not waterproof, my first comparison scene has been done at home accompanied by the rain outside. Definitely there was not enough light to shoot handheld and I put all the cameras on a tripod and enabled self-timer. Old Godlock you just need to switch a small toggle on the top plate. On Yashica the flash is always in auto mode, which is very annoying, so you need to cycle through the menu to enable sort of night mode and then activate 10 seconds timer via separate small button. So yeah, the same thing with the Konica, but the buttons are so small and very inconvenient to press. So Konica added a small bot with a pin on the original neck strap and even mentioned in the user manual. All the cameras have a great lenses with a minimum focus distance of 35 cm except contacts, which has it equal to 70 cm or something. So forget about macro shots or close up portraits on a T2. Finally, the weather become colder, which almost always means sun during the winter. Dutch government decided to roll out lockdown during the Christmas holidays, so I didn't have a lot of options to choose from. As I mentioned before, probably it's not the best place to make photos. Okay, let's be honest, as well as a whole idea to compare ancient film cameras in the digital era. So if you have a good amount of direct light and clear composition, all of the cameras provide quite consistent results. Through the more busy scenes, I recommend manually preset infinity focus mode just to avoid mistakes of autofocusing, uh, but more on it later. What's interesting, I have an impression that my Konica Smithrin leans toward underexposure rather than overexposure, which is not a good idea with film, to be honest. It's clearly visible when you compare results side by side. Of course, it's not a big deal and final images look just fine, but it's always good to have a bit of flexibility during editing. Uh, remember I mentioned AF issues with complex scenes? Uh, here we go. In this case, I just pointed all of the three cameras to the same direction and just released the shutter. Results came out quite inconsistent, so once again, if you know that your point of interest is further than 5-6 meters, then it's always safer to preset infinity mode. But for the sake of experiment, I process all the images with default NLP settings, and sometimes I just change a little bit white balance to more appealing results. Uh, but yeah, just to mention, the value was the same across three images of the same scene. Now it's time to head home and fin my cat.
these images don't have any artistic value, but cats almost always make the situation better. Nothing special here as well, and I can't argue with the effects of underexposure of Big Mini. Creepy, I know, I meant it when I've been making these photos, uh, but I was very curious of how the metering of each camera will behave, so I can use the results as a reference in the similar conditions later on. Next section supposed to show how the built-in flashes works, but as usual, something went wrong. First things first, Christine is a professional photographer, 10 plus years of experience and blah blah blah, but why the every next photo goes lower and lower? I don't know. Anyway, let's find out why the last photo is without flash. Remember that I mentioned at the beginning that on the Konica and on the Yashica auto flash mode is enabled by default. And I was like, oh yeah, that's annoying, you need to cycle through the menu and all this stuff. And here I am, I forgot to tell Christina that she needs to manually select one of the two flash modes on the Context T2. Okay, next one is about landscape photography. Sort of. Uh, so we've catched the train and moved to the dunes near Blumendal, but unfortunately our initial road was closed so we didn't have any other choice rather than improvise on the spot. This time I also just pointed cameras towards the object and pressed the shutter button as you can see here. And I've got three different results, and I don't even know which one I like the most to be honest. This one was the obvious one and all the cameras nailed it as expected. So the beautiful road towards the sunset was closed, and we made 100 degrees around and went towards the flat grumpiness. So don't expect anything special here, but if you are still watching, I think you are not surprised. Okay, so what we have here, none of the cameras handle this simple scene, so it's just another reminder to always use plus 2 EV compensation when you shoot towards the light source. Next ones are quite disappointing. 
For some reason, only contacts was able to nail focusing on these shots. Maybe there was not enough light, or maybe my cameras are too old. I don't know, but it is what it is. On this scene, I didn't set infinity mode by purpose also, and I did it just to check how reliable is autofocus in low light, and unfortunately, only contacts was able to focus correctly. And the last one once again shows that Yashike is outlier here and performed very bad in low light. Uh, it's just my exact camera or the whole lineup of T4s have this flow? I don't know. And if I see tripod mount, I immediately willing to try it. All you need to do is just set infinity, add to UV, enable self timer, and you're good to go. Steps for the big mini are exactly the same, with one major disadvantage that buttons are so small and so inconvenient to press, so you need to find a way to make it work. On Yashika, you can't add exposure conspiration, so you just need to disable flash and set infinity mode. And it's not possible to select everything at the same time. So I left focusing on the moral concerns of the camera and set night mode to disable flash. And this comparison shows that a couple of extra stops are a great addition if you're shooting at night, but unfortunately Yashiki is not capable of it. And the bonus track, using cameras in studio. And Christina shared with me her feedback. She mentioned that all of the cameras are quite convenient for this purpose, just turn the camera on and fire the shutter. What she had found disappointing is that sometimes Konika and Yashika could decide to fire flash, so you need to always keep in mind that you need to disable the setting once you turned off and turned on your camera, which is not always an easy thing to remember since you have two more digital and one more medium format film camera to take care of. Oh yeah, and the last big thing, Context T2 has a huge and bright viewfinder, so you always unconsciously pick an T2 first, and then the rest, since its viewfinder just a pleasure to use. <laughs>